Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be the second part to the video I recently uploaded um, where you saw me cut the hole for the fuel pump as well as run through my entire fuel system setup. So sit back, relax, and let's get back to work. Now let's start working on the sender. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the old pump off, cut these guys short, slip on the tube nuts, and start flaring them. I did decide to go with a Walbro 400. I was uh, jumping back and forth between going with a single pump or doing the, the twin 255s. Right now, I'm not going to be pushing uh, nowhere near enough power to uh, utilize two Walbro 255s. So a 400 is going to be plenty. On the dyno, where I had the cartoon last, I'm assuming it's probably going to make somewhere in the low 500s. This pump is going to be plenty for that. Even if I do the heads and everything later on, I'm sure I'm still going to be all right. It's a little bit bigger than the 255. Mostly the bottom part here is larger. Um, the height is pretty much the same. All right, so I got the old pump out. New one didn't come as a kit, so I didn't get a new sock with it. I was thinking I was just going to reuse the old one, but as you can see, this doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have to go get a sock kit for this before I can actually uh, drop the whole thing in the tank. Um, but we can still get it wired up. One thing I noticed, I pulled this little, this piece of rubber that was around here off, and inside of here, there's all this like crap. I don't know if it's just from, um, it almost looks like it's probably from the inside of a gas tank or something. You see there's all this like colored, flaky kind of crap. I don't know where this would have came from, but it's all down in there. Um, that was kind of weird and there's like nothing in the sock. I think the main purpose of this is so uh, the pump doesn't rub on the metal sitting down here um, in the holder. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe stretch this over. Yeah, so I got the rubber piece around here. You can see it just it's stretched along the bottom. So now this could go in here and the good thing is it looks like the body at the top is pretty much the same size as the 255. So it should still clip in here pretty well. All right, yeah, so for the most part this fits. Uh, you can see where the rubber hose is gonna go, that's lined up. Okay, so I got the pump in. I didn't have a hose clamp big enough uh, to go all the way around this thing, so I just put two of them together. These two little skinny ones fit in here quite nicely. Clamped it right under this bracket here, and that's in there tight. It's not going anywhere. Uh, all I need is the sock now, then I could clip that on the bottom. So next, I'm just gonna go cut a little piece of submersible hose, uh, slip it on here, put a couple of clamps, and then we'll get started on the wiring. All right, so the fuel hose is on. Next thing I'm gonna be doing is wiring this guy up. Now, my plan for this is to leave this whole connection alone up here. I'm just gonna cut the old power wire, the power and ground wire short up here because the, uh, the sender wiring is going through this. And then I'll just cut the uh, power and ground up here as well. I'm just gonna drill another hole in the top here, put a grommet through, and then I'm gonna fish my two new pump wires through that. As I said, they are gonna be a lot thicker than the factory ones. I'm going with a 12 gauge. So I'm just gonna drill the 3 8 hole with my Christmas tree bit right through the top here. We'll pop the grommet through, and then we'll get to soldering the wires on the pump and fishing them through. Okay, so all the wiring is done. I just went and soldered the wires directly to the pump because I didn't have any um, 12 gauge like slip on terminals. Plus the solder is gonna be better anyway. I'm not gonna worry about this coming loose from vibration and popping off when I'm driving. So these are both soldered on. Uh, the positive, they are labeled. There's a little plus of positive, uh, minus for negative. Also the negative terminal is a little bit smaller than the positive. So I soldered those guys on, slipped on some heat shrink, then just ran the wires up and threw my Harbor Freight grommet there. So next thing we're going to be doing is cutting down these hard lines, slipping on the uh, tube nuts, and flaring the ends for my new feed and return lines. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to uh, flare our third gen sender 
to accept the new AN fittings. Very simple to do. All you're going to need is a simple brake flaring tool. You get these at AutoZone, really any auto parts store, probably 20, 30 bucks. Now, the way this is going to work, any of you guys who've, you know, done this before, flare brake lines, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to be putting the line in here and we're going to be pressing a flare on the end. And what that's going to do is allow our hard line to seal against the AN fitting. Uh, the way you want to cut this, I already cut mine down, but you want to use like uh, either a tubing cutter or a grinding wheel. A tube, like a pipe cutter is the, the best thing to do. You get like a little tiny one made for brake line. Um, I just went ahead and cut it with the cutoff wheel. Try to get as clean as a cut as possible with the grinding wheel. But when all that's said and done, we're gonna have to go and clean these ends up. If you can see in here, there's like a lot of burring in there and like it's, it's not a clean cut. You wanna clean this up as much as possible before we actually flare it because how the end of this line looks is how good um, your flare is gonna come out and how good it's actually gonna seal. So to go about doing this, uh, you can use a file very easy to do. You want the end of these guys to be relatively flat. So, I mean, these came out pretty good when I cut them, but if you cut them and they're kind of like, uh, like the cuts on an angle or, uh, you know, it's angled that way, you want these to be flat. I mean, if you're using a grinding wheel, they're not gonna come out perfect. So in my case, I'm gonna have to file this down, but just come in here with a file. Very simply just uh, file it away until you could get it pretty much flat. If you flared brake lines before, this is exactly the same thing. The only thing we're doing, we're using like a single flare instead of a, a double flare or like a bubble flare. I think I got that cleaned up pretty good. Um, this end was definitely cut more sideways than the other one, but it looks like I have it pretty flat. With the outsides cleaned up like that, uh, then you're gonna wanna come in here with um, either put like a drill bit or um, like I'd like to use a Christmas tree bit. And you just want to get rid of any of the crap, um, like the burrs that are inside the line. They make a little um, deburring tool that you could do for this. Once again, I have it, don't know where it is, but a Christmas tree bit will work too. Just want to uh, tip this down so everything falls out and doesn't go into the line. Just stick it in there, you know, run it in there by hand. You can see it gets all that junk out of there. All right, so with both of our ends cleaned up, now it's time to actually put the fittings on. The nut on there first. And then you're gonna put the sleeve on. The little uh, step on the sleeve there, you can see the notch at the top. You want that facing um, towards the end of the line where you're flaring. That's gonna sit on there just like that. Uh, once that's done, we're ready to flare. And uh, when it comes to AN fittings, 3 8 is equivalent to a dash six. So uh, if you are using 3 8 line, you're gonna wanna go pick up dash six fittings. Um, there's a whole chart online. If you just Google like AN sizing chart, you get a picture and it'll tell you all the different sizes and um, how they convert from the regular like uh, standard lines over to the AN sizes. Let's start flaring. So very simply, once you got your uh, fittings on there, we're gonna slide this guy over. You want the side with the little uh, indentation here, you want that facing up because that's what's gonna actually be forming the fitting. The other side is just flat. This side you, you'll be using if you're doing like a bubble flare or something. This part can be kind of tricky. You wanna get it just so you have enough sticking out because if you make it too small it's not going to seal right if you make it too big your fitting isn't going to slip over it so you just kind of kind of uh you do this enough times you kind of get an idea of where how much you want it to stick out probably right about there and then you're going to want to tighten down the side closest to the fitting first just tighten these guys down by hand we got that just slightly poking out of the top now, once we get in here with the uh, the chuck here, this is going to tighten down and press that inside of this lip here. And that's what's gonna make our flare. So I just like to take um, a little something to lube it up. A little bit of uh, penetrating oil there. Just to make it press a little bit smoother. Once again, make sure your fittings are on. Don't wanna forget them. So if you do, you're gonna have to cut the end off and do this all over again. So we got that in there sitting against the end of our line. Clamps are tightened down. Now we're just gonna come in here and turn this guy down. Now you get it pretty much till it's just uh, stops. You don't have to go crazy with it. I just like to uh, back it off and drive it in a little few times, kind of clean the end off. We'll give it a little shine to it. There's our outcome. You can see we have a very, very nice clean flare. Now all we're gonna do is pop this off. Get this 
guy off of here. Uh, let me clean it up a bit. And there is our end result. You could see how nice that just came out. And the way this is gonna work, you're gonna pull your sleeve over and that's gonna sit in there just like that. And what that's gonna allow you to do is to take, uh, this is just a male to male uh, dash six AN union. And that's gonna, uh, once the nuts tightened, you can see that's gonna sit in there just like that and make a perfect seal. You can see the, uh, the actual flare itself covers most of this surface area and that's what you want you want a really really good seal just like that if you do this and the flare is too small and it's not really uh it doesn't cover most of the end this end then you're going to want to cut it and redo it reason that would happen if the tubing wasn't sticking out far enough or uh if the tubing the tubing was sticking too far up when you flared it you might actually have it way way too big and this isn't actually even going to slip over it same thing you have to cut it and redo it uh, if you never did this before i definitely would recommend using it on just like scrap line uh, do a few flares get the hang of it before you actually start doing it to your pump because you only have so many lines here if you got to keep cutting them you're going to run out of room okay so i have the fittings done the an uh, union adapters are on and uh, just a tip i went and picked up one of these an like line wrenches it's uh this it's aluminum like the fittings so you don't have to worry about like scratching them up um you could use like an adjustable or anything but it's just uh, it makes it a lot easier and uh it prevents you from uh, marring up the fittings but these guys are all tightened down i got my fuel sock on we're pretty much ready to drop this thing in um just double checking my connections here uh hose clamps are tight my uh solder connections at the pump look good everything's tied away nothing's going to interfere with the float um, but I think we're good to go. Alright, so the pump's all in, I got the ring back on, um, and I just rotated this until those little tabs on the actual ring align with uh, the tank. They're pretty much like stops there. So that's all in and good to go. The only thing I gotta do is cut these guys down. Um, I gotta figure out which one's the sender, and then I'll just cut the other two down. I'm not gonna be needing them. And then these are gonna be going up to the front to our relay. All right, so I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I'm gonna link all the parts I use in the description like I usually do. The two AN line nuts, the sleeves, the male to male um, dash six fittings, and my little dash six AN line wrench over here. Next video, I will be wiring the pump up. We're gonna run these wires up to the front of the car. I'm gonna tap a 12 gauge wire off the battery fuse block and to my new relay because as I said, this pump does use a lot more power than the regular 255. That's why I did go and up the gauge on the wiring. But little by the little, she is coming along. Still lots of content's gonna be coming out. I still have to do the meth kit, the, uh, the intercooler, get the actual blower on the car, work any kinks out. I'm still waiting on the accessory drive for the blower. So once that comes in, I'll be able to install the last LSX Concepts piece. Then from there, I'm just gonna have to go measure for a belt um, get that on and we'll probably be ready to start it up. I did get my injectors I went and picked up a set of Siemens DECA 80 pound injectors. So those are ready to go That's really gonna be the last part of the fuel system Once I run my new lines uh, Going up to the motor link to my Instagram is gonna be down below. I'm always posting pictures of the build as I go along um, Progress pics what I'm doing when I'm working on it when the next video is going to come out. So you want to check that out if you want to stay in the loop of when this blower is actually going to be on the car and when it's going to be running. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.